This video is sponsored by our patrons, so thank you to them, but also thank you everyone else just for watching. We pick up basically right where we left off. We're still waiting on a lot of research before we can seriously progress our base, so we're just bouncing around until we can get to that point. We have some improvements we can make while things research, however. As these comments pointed out, my harvester designs weren't exactly efficient. Thank you guys. What I wasn't understanding was that only one tile of the mine needs to actually be on the platform for it to come with when I move it. This means I wasn't fitting nearly as many miners on the platform as I could have otherwise. So keep in mind, to begin with I could fit 7 on the platform. And now with just a little shuffling, I have this new design. It fits a whole 11 miners on the platform. There's even space for a 12th on the right there, however eventually there's going to be a warp pipe there so it won't be there forever. If you look now, I forgot to connect one of the belts. I set up the same thing with the other platform. Now we'll be able to have potentially 24 miners going at the same time. We quite literally may not be able to use all this new input. For this reason, I build buffers for incoming materials from the mines. It's not much, but hopefully it'll keep production going while we're between planets. I'm going to move my labs over to the right side now, to free up the left wing for even more hand feeding. I promise that by the end of this episode we'll have actual automated setups, we just need more space first. This is why those buffer chests are so important. We're bringing in so many resources that the elevator chests can't pull them through fast enough. If it wasn't for the buffers, we'd have been gathering no resources all this time. The other thing that doesn't help is how awful an idea it is to mix the resources going through these chests. If it isn't all immediately being removed from the chest on the other side, it just ends up pulling one of the resources. The best answer to this is just more consumption, but we're limited until we have better furnaces. Watch this satisfying time lapse become immensely unsatisfying as copper backs up. After a lot of waiting and hand feeding, we reach a big breakthrough. We can fit a lot more machines here now, but we can do even better than this. We're using so many resources, when I reach a peaceful one we have nothing to do, so I leave basically straight away. It always feels like such a prize ending up on an alien biomes planet. With my newly built car, I'm ready to set off across the surface. Harvester platforms are best placed far away from my base. This is because without the pollution from the platform, they should get very few attacks. This wasn't as much of a problem before, but as we start to spend more time on planets, the bite attacks will only get bigger, and the more space we need to use for defences on these things, the less space we have for miners. This part of the game has been a lot of waiting, but as soon as we get these researchers we're waiting for, the whole game opens up. I definitely could and should be playing a lot more actively, but the idea of pulling everything up every 20 minutes just makes me want to cry. The bottom doesn't affect me, I just get a bit dangerous to make up for it. If you'd believe it, this research is the biggest upgrade we could get at the moment, for reasons you'll see shortly. Naturally, I'm messing around elsewhere when the next factory floor upgrade finishes, but here's the outcome. I forgot to connect the water when we arrived on this planet, so the power runs out. This could be catastrophic if I didn't realise, as those turrets only hold 10 ammo. Placing down my harvester platforms, I accidentally create this monstrosity. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Electric Miner MK 1.5, brought to you by Warped Audio 2. Anyway, it's time to see what that research I was talking about earlier does. Ta-da! Now that's a lot of space. And we get three more of those. This is how we're going to solve our space problem. I mean, these things practically exist for furnace stacks. I'm too busy dancing around the furnaces picking up iron for this one, but you can see it on the minimap. Here's the final result. Now that is a lot of space. These bridges are only 7 tiles wide however, and furnace stacks are 9 tiles wide, so I need to research this bridge widening upgrade before I can start building properly. Here it comes. Perfect. This will perfectly fit some furnace stacks. I'm planning it from the beginning to be able to support a full red belt of resources. That's 24 steel furnaces on either side. We didn't even have 24 furnaces on the entire factory floor at the start of this episode. Doing this without bots is absolute hell. Some sort of bot start should be a damn dependency with this mod. The first thing we build is the most important thing, ammo. Buffers are absolutely essential in this mod, so I'm making sure to incorporate them as much as possible. Here I'm building a quite satisfying buffer for iron, copper and coal. These are important if we want to make the most out of the peaceful planets we occasionally encounter. 
Then with that, we can finally plug in the new setup and get some real production started. It's crazy how this mod warps the perspective of the game. What would be a pre-starter base in a normal game has carried us up to the 8 hour mark. Although, that could just be a consequence of how slow I am. You know, having 800 hours in something doesn't necessarily mean you're good at it. But the size and volume of these attacks is insane. Usually by the time you get to this level of pollution in vanilla, the biters have evolved far beyond this. It's strange seeing such big attacks from such little biters. Now it's time for the copper stack. Again all by hand because I was foolish enough to not install any early bots mods. I might have to start calling it Carpal Tunnel Tario. I snake the copper on to meet up with the iron. It's taken a whole 8 hours, but I'm starting to sense a fully automated factory farming. Even then however, it's never truly automated, because I still need to move the harvesters around every time we warp. Don't get me wrong, it's a great mod, but it still makes me want to pull my eyes out sometimes. Going from earlier, where I had literally nothing to do for hours, to suddenly having everything to do, was quite jarring. But this is the bit we played the game for. Have I mentioned enough how much I just love alien biomes? There's just nothing that looks like this in vanilla, it's incredible. Even if the extra trees and rocks are incredibly annoying to get around. Here's more James Bond shenanigans. Generally though, worms aren't that hard to dodge. You just need to wiggle a bit to throw off the predictive aiming. If you don't turn at all though, they have a hundred percent accuracy. Yes, I occasionally save scum. Corp. If I ever do die or save scum though, I will show it. I'm only human though. Yeah, I really don't think I'll find anything useful here. Fuck, 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 fuck. That could have gone worse, but we'll live with it. It looks really bad, but that could have been us. I certainly won't be making that mistake again. Meanwhile back downstairs, we have more science to automate. I could probably make this even more compact, but I'm going to be tearing it all up later anyway, so I might as well save a bit of my sanity. I simply need it to work, and more compact and more permanent designs can come later when I have more space and more bots. Automated red and green science is great, but what's really going to push forward is automated blue science, which is our next goal. So once green science is finished and producing, we can move on to fulfilling that goal. We're missing a few resources before we can automate blue science production however, the first of all being steel. Ignore that horrific mistake I made up top there. Here's another quick time lapse, just a snapshot of the current state of the base. Despite all that new space, we're filling it fast. You might have noticed these tanks in the background, but we're moving them over here now. These are the next resource we need for blue science, oil. Since we won't often be hooked up to it, we need a big buffer for when we're between oil fields. The first blue science ingredient we finish is engine units. I'm not building them to any kind of ratio, I just want as many as possible because they're used for flamethrower turrets, as well as other purposes such as pumps and cars, which I think we established earlier, I might go through a couple cars in this playthrough. But anyways, I can also set up the blue science assemblers themselves. Once this is done, all that will be left is the other two blue science ingredients, which are both quite simple. The most complicated part is going to be actually getting the oil itself. Here's my solution to that. You might remember the planetary teleporter, which is kind of like a harvester platform without the actual platform bit. We can use it to teleport oil back to our base without using up a precious harvester platform. The obvious downside being I need to remember to come and collect this before I warp away. Immediately I expand the buffer, any time spent not harvesting is a waste. Before I can do anything with the oil though, it's time for the hourly scour for new resource nodes. One thing I hadn't mentioned before is these little loot chests scattered around the planet. They're added by Warp Tario and usually contain some quite useful stuff. That was just rifle ammo, but I've seen things such as assemblers, power poles, gun turrets. It makes these little excursions a lot more rewarding. Once we've found everything we're looking for, we can go back and start processing the oil we're gathering. Unlike engine units, I am building these to a very specific ratio because I want to use as little space as possible. I'm going for 20 blue science a minute. I simply don't have the room or planning skills for anything bigger than that. What's important really is just getting any sort of blue science started. With blue science, I'll be able to get even more platform upgrades, so we'll be able to refactor the base and get even more production later on. What I'm hoping for is that every time we refactor the base, we'll be able to add a new science to it. This means hopefully we'll only have to do it twice more before we can finish the game. You might have noticed in the background I've been building the blue science setup. 
This is it finished now, we're just waiting for some copper so we can start producing red circuits. However, there was no point shuffling harvester platforms around so late on a planet. So we're going to move on to the next one and we'll get some copper there. Not long after I set off, I realised I've got to bring the eastern harvester platform with me. Thankfully I can just pop down to the harvester floor using the western harvester platform. I still managed to forget the planetary teleporter however, so if I run into oil, I'm a bit screwed. I run into copper before I run into oil however, so I just head back into my base. We have enough oil stocked up for now anyway. As you can see here, all the other sciences were also completely stopped because of no copper. It's another thing that makes this mod so interesting for me, since you can only easily mine from two resources at once. Picking which resources to mine from becomes another strategic choice you have to make. Access to blue science has opened the door to a lot of important researches I've got my eyes on. The obvious ones are mining productivity and more space. However, researches like the one that give us a water source in the boiler floor are also very important. Here we can see some of the very first blue science balls starting to flow. I end up choosing the special warp mining productivity as my first research. This is because more ore throughput is never a bad thing. Especially now that we're producing so much science, we're going to need a lot of resources. Talking about resource shortages, we're now chronically low on iron. There's simply not enough coming in, and any of it is is split across science and ammo production. I upgrade the furnace stack so it can support a red belt of R, but it's a stopgap solution at best, because we're barely even bringing in a yellow belt of R. Our problem with iron will be solved with time and some mining productivity upgrades. Plus, we're harvesting a lot more copper than we're using, so once the buffers are filled we can use both harvesters for iron. First, however, I'm using iron from the buffer chests of the old base to build this semi-automated grenade setup. We don't use military science for too much now, so it's not really worth the space to automate it, however we can hand feed some. First, however, an alarm I set up to go off when the power plant has low coal starts sounding. It would appear that we have low coal. As it turns out, you can only hear it when you're on the same floor as it. If you go back to the last clip, you'll actually see it's been going off for a little while, I didn't even know. So we have to pick up the harvester on the copper and go and find some coal before our power grid completely blacks out. This goes back to what I was saying earlier, to harvest one resource, we have to sacrifice another. I know I could just build mines normally, but I'd have to pull them up before we leave, and without bots, who can be bothered with that? Here's a strange sight. All the inputs for the planetary teleport on the other side have completely disappeared. This happens every single time it gets upgraded, and it's really quite annoying. Probably one of the most annoying bugs in the mod, however, you don't upgrade it very often, so it's not so bad. I can get back to some more hand-fed military science now. Again, this is all just using iron as stockpiled before we refactored the base. While I realise now that I could have, and probably should have, automated military science, it at least gives me something to do while I'm waiting, and trust me, with 20 blue science a minute, I do a lot of waiting. Contrary to popular belief, I do have a bright idea every now and again. I need a lot of oil, and I also need a lot of stone, and I found the two of them right next to each other. So I can bring them both through the planetary teleporter, and not waste a harvester platform on either of them. Of course, this also means I need to make sure I've got the foresight to not be leaving in a rush, because I won't have time to come and pull all this apart. With this stone, we're just going to belt it down to the factory floor and store it in some chests. Since at this point we're only using it for military science, it's all getting hand fed anyway. Then at one point, while I was being productive, like usual, the return of the sound. Not knowing exactly where it is, I instantly assume it's the stone outpost we just built. So I run up there and find... It's completely fine. So what did break? Back to the mad rush. And while we're at it, I decided to leave for some reason, because we couldn't overreact anymore, could we? And in the end it just turns out it was the turret one out of ammo. So we probably could have stayed here a bit longer, to be fair. We had a good thing, you stupid son of a- We had- Stone. We had a- Oil. We had everything we needed, it all ran like clockwork. We fix it up, we fill up the turrets, but I still feel a bit stupid for panicking. Once we start warping, we can't cancel it. We also mustn't forget about our planetary teleporter, as we have to pick it all up manually. In some ways, we might almost consider this a blessing in disguise, because I just found this massive oil patch with high richness. This is great because the richer the patch is, the faster the pumps pump. 
so with any luck this will easily fill our buffer. Besides this absolutely gargantuan oil patch, this was a pretty boring planet, so we'll just skip to a good bit when we leave. I'm so used to Warp Tario by this point that this base feels absolutely massive. Of course it's not really, it's so small I can fit half of it on my screen at once. Here's the moment of truth, where will we go next? It's a lava planet. Wonderful. That wonderful was, if you couldn't tell, dripping with sarcasm. Don't get me wrong, they're still beautiful, but they're also covered in rocks. And you and me both know that Factorio's driving mechanics aren't the best ever, which combined with these strange coloured smudges of slowing stuff on the ground, leads to a very stressful driving experience. In the end, I end up in this beautiful pink forest. You know what, it almost makes it worth it. Almost. But finding nothing to the north, instead go south, with great difficulty. Bet you're sick of hearing me gush about alien biomes at this point. We do, in the end, come across something of use. More oil, we really can never have enough. Hey, I've seen this one before. Sorry. Eventually, we find this nice big iron patch. I think I'll put both my harvesters here. If I can find the space. Which I do in the end, and then hopefully this will mean our iron problems are no more. Soon, we start researching better harvester platforms. Some technologies in Warp Tario actually have an interesting quirk where it takes multiple science battles to do a single research step. Which is why our red and green science have dried up so much, because every single research step takes two green science, two red science, but only one military science. You can see it briefly when I open the research panel here. Once that's done, that's another major upgrade. You can see how much bigger it is already. I'm confident we can as much as double the number of miners we can fit on this thing. First thing though, these buffers need to go. They were partially destroyed by the harvester expanding, plus we can make it even bigger now since the corridors widened slightly. I place it a bit further away this time, so next time the platform expands it doesn't destroy it again. Now that is a buffer. But what we're really here for is to upgrade this platform. All this iron in the ground makes it really hard to see where the platform ends. Even just from this roughest idea, you can see how much more we're going to be able to fit on this. In the end, this is what I come up with. 35 miners. More than three times as many as fits on the smaller platform. Makes me wish I'd done this hours ago. It doesn't even need blue science. Pretty soon, the other one finishes too. I just copy paste the other side, however a lot of it can't be done until we place it down on an R patch. which we find eventually, and we can get to work. The reason we couldn't use that massive patch from earlier is because we had to escape that planet. Evolution reached about 35%, and our yellow ammo turrets couldn't keep up with a pure volume of medium biters. Our next step in the game is going to be rectifying that. And there's the finished platform. Here's that water source technology I've been talking about. With this, we don't need that silly pipe wall on the surface, and can graduate to a real wall. Anyway, so as you can see here, I've started starving oil on the surface. The oil from the tanks downstairs can flow up to here, but the oil up here can't flow back down. This makes sure that even if we run out of oil downstairs, we still have some left up here. As soon as I arrive on the next planet, I get to work. Ideally, we need at least some defences before the biters show up. Firstly, we have some flame for turrets. This is what we want the oil for. Already the hard at work. Flame throwers on their own can be a bit helpless, however, so we need something else to pick off the stragglers. For that we can just use plain old gun turrets. They're set up much in the same way they were before. Just one long belt, rotating constantly around the entire platform feeding them. We double layer the walls, so we at least get a notification before they're fully breached. And the final layer of defence is a second set of gun turrets. No particular reason, I just thought one might not be enough. But with that, I think we've quite successfully turned our warp factory into a warp fortress. 
So without a further ado, thank you for watching and good night. Yet again, thank you to our Patreons, Handlebars, Dick Dastardly Enthusiast, and Fen Blue.